In this video, we are going to explore the forces that you would experience when riding a roller coaster. So we are going to look at what forces a rider would experience going around a loop-de-loop -loop like this, and the forces they experience at the top of hills and the bottom of valleys. Let's start by looking at the loop-de-loop. -loop. You may have also heard it called a vertical loop. Now what I hope you recognize is that when the rider goes around the loop, they are moving with circular motion. And we learn that when an object is moving in a circle, the net force acting on the object is the centripetal force. And the equation for the centripetal force is F net is equal to M V squared divided by R, where M is the mass of the object, V is the object's speed, and R is the radius of the circle. And now I wanna focus on these two specific points, which is when the rider is at the bottom of the loop and the rider is at the top of the loop. Let's start by looking at what happens when the rider is at the bottom of the loop. We'll start by drawing a free body diagram. We know there will be the force of gravity pushing down on the rider, and there will be the normal force from the surface of the roller coaster pushing back up on the rider. And now what I hope you notice is that the net force has to point up because that's towards the center of the circle. And now let's make an F net equation, which would be the sum of all the forces acting on the rider. So we have F net is equal to the normal force minus the force of gravity. Now we know that F net is the centripetal force, so we can replace F net with M V squared divided by R. And of course we can replace the force of gravity with MG. Now we will rearrange and isolate for the normal force. And we are left with this equation which says that the normal force is equal to m v squared divided by r plus mg. And now remember, the normal force represents the object's apparent weight, which is the weight the rider would feel. The object's actual weight is equal to mg. And now what I hope you notice is that the normal force is greater than the actual weight. That means the rider would feel heavier at the bottom of the loop. And now let's look at what happens when the rider is at the top of the loop. We will start by drawing a free body diagram. And now of course we have the force of gravity pushing down on the rider, but we also have the normal force pointing down as well. And now this is where a lot of people get confused because we're used to the normal force pointing up, but think about it. The normal force is the result of the surface pushing against the object. Since the surface is above the object, it will have to push down in order to push back against the object. And so the normal force is pointed down. And we know the net force would be pointed down because it's directed towards the center of the circle. And now we need to make our F net equation. We would write that F net is equal to the normal force plus the force of gravity. Since F net is the centripetal force, we can replace it with M V squared divided by R and of course we can replace the force of gravity with mg. And then we can rearrange this and isolate for the normal force. And what we can see is that the normal force is equal to m v squared divided by r minus mg. And in this case, the normal force, which represents the object's apparent weight, is smaller than it was when the rider was at the bottom of the loop. And that's why riders feel lighter when they're at the top of loop-de-loops. You might have experienced this where you actually feel almost weightless. Now the most important thing that I hope you learned from this little lesson was how to draw the forces when the object is at the bottom of the loop and the top of the loop. Let's do a quick example to practice this. In this question, we have a roller coaster rider with a mass of 50 kilograms traveling with a constant speed around a 10 meter radius loop. We are told that the normal force at the top of the loop is 50 newtons. And we want to know what is the normal force at the bottom of the loop. Let's start for drawing a free body diagram for the rider at the bottom of the loop. Now let's make our F net equation. We have F net is equal to the normal force minus the force of gravity. F net is the centripetal force, so we can replace it with m v squared divided by r and the force of gravity can be replaced with mg. And we wanna know the normal force at the bottom of the loop, so I will rearrange and isolate for the normal force. And now looking at this equation, we know the mass of the rider, the radius of the loop, 
the acceleration due to gravity. The only thing we're missing is the rider's speed. But we are told they're traveling with a constant speed around the loop. So let's use what we know from the top of the loop to solve for the speed. We'll start by drawing a free body diagram to represent the rider at the top of the loop. Now let's make our F net equation. So that would be the normal force plus the force of gravity. We can replace F net with mv squared divided by r. We can replace the normal force with 50 newtons. And we can replace the force of gravity with mg. Now all we need to do is rearrange and isolate for v, the speed of the rider. And once we've isolated for the speed, we can start plugging in our values. After we do the math, we find that the speed of the rider at the top of the loop is 10.4 meters per second. And now we have everything we need to solve for the normal force at the bottom of the loop. Returning to our first equation, all we have to do is plug in our values. Returning to our first equation, all we have to do is plug in our values. And what we find is the normal force at the bottom of the loop is equal to 1031 newtons. And now what I want you to notice is how much larger the normal force is at the bottom of the loop compared to the top of the loop. And that's why the rider would feel so much heavier at the bottom of the loop. Now questions that come up a lot when dealing with roller coasters refer to the minimum speed that the roller coaster needs. And the reason these questions come up is because the rider could fall off the roller coaster if they're going too slow. So we want to determine the minimum speed that you need to not fall off. The minimum speed is equal to the square root of RG, where R is the radius of the circle and G is the acceleration due to gravity. But it's super simple to derive this equation, so let's do it quickly. What we know is that when the rider falls off, the normal force will equal to zero. And that makes sense because if you've fallen off the roller coaster, there's no more surface underneath you to apply a normal force. And that's the key to deriving this equation. So I will quickly start by drawing a free body diagram. Then we will write our F net equation, which is the normal force plus the force of gravity. We can replace F net with the centripetal force. So M V squared divided by R. We will replace the normal force with zero and we will replace the force of gravity with mg. And then all we need to do is simplify this equation and rearrange for v, the speed of the rider. And what we find is v is equal to the square root of rg. Now this equation is great because it's super simple. All you need to know is the radius of the circle. Let's do a super quick question to practice using this equation. In this question, we have a roller coaster which has a vertical loop with a radius of 10 meters. And we want to know what is the minimum speed that a rider must have in order to not fall off the track. Now remember, our minimum speed is equal to the square root of rg. So all we have to do is plug in the radius and plug in the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And what we find is that the minimum speed is about 9.9 .9 meters per second. So the roller coaster must go at least that fast in order for the rider to stay on the track. And now the final topic I want to cover is the parts of a roller coaster where the rider is going up and down. So hills and valleys like this. And now the most important thing that you have to recognize is that we're still dealing with circular motion. And what this means is that we're still dealing with the centripetal force. So the net force acting on the rider has to be pointed towards the center of the circle. So let's quickly draw our free body diagrams, starting with the top of the hill. Here we have the force of gravity pointing down, the normal force is pointed up, and the net force would be directed down towards the center of the circle. Now let's look at what happens when the rider is at the bottom of a valley. While we still have the force of gravity pushing down on them, we have the normal force from the surface pushing back up, and the net force is pointed up towards the center of the circle. Now let's do our F net equations. For the top of the hill, we have F net is equal to the force of gravity minus the normal force. In this case, the force of gravity is positive because it's pointed towards the center of the circle. The normal force is negative because it's pointed away from the center of the circle. And we're dealing with centripetal force here, so F net can be replaced with m v squared divided by r, and the force of gravity can be replaced with mg. 
Now let's look at the bottom of the valley. Here we have F net is equal to the normal force minus the force of gravity. We can replace F net with mv squared divided by r, and we can replace the force of gravity with mg. And now truly the most important questions regarding this type of roller coaster motion is what is the minimum speed that the rider needs so they stay on the tracks and don't fly off of them? And I'll give it away to you. The minimum speed is equal to the square root of rg, exactly the same as what we just learned. And I challenge you to use our F net equation from the top of the hill to prove that this equation is true. And now in summary, you should be able to look at this roller coaster and look at every point that I've drawn a rider at and be able to draw the forces that are acting on that rider. So pause this video and add the normal force, the force of gravity, and the net force to each one of these riders. So if you understand the forces that each one of these riders will experience, then the next thing you wanna make sure you can do is find the minimum speed that these riders need to stay on the track. And that's the end of this lesson on roller coaster forces.